a lot of the controls for the Witcher. We could, you know what, maybe we could just load it up and I can run around and people can laugh at how terrible Welcome I am. Welcome to the Empire. Oh, Joe Stay Blackman! Shy. Welcome to the Empire! Thanks for having the channel. Thank you, Joe. Welcome. Thank you very much. I wonder how this is going to be. I've never really streamed a game that actually is somewhat taxing on my actual GPU. Or at least I probably have, and just not recently. Because uh, I run my encoding on the GPU as well. <laughs> oh, Tracy, I saw that tweet. Oh my god. George, George is my spirit animal. Hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breast. Empire emirs marched his legions into our lands. Laid siege to every fortress from here to the Blue Mountains. Rapid and ravenous, bites and bites away. North, you stand at the precipice. Your kings have failed you, so now you turn to the gods. Yet you do not plead, you do not kneel to dust your hands with ash. Instead you wail, why have the gods forsaken me? Oh, us. Look into the trials we failed long ago. In a time past, our world intertwined with another through an upheaval scholars call... The conjunction of spheres. Um... Oh yeah, I play with the controller because I prefer movement with controller on third-person games. Boop. Some peasants found her and took her to the Baron, Velen's self-appointed ruler. The warlord took the young woman in, had her nursed back to health, then sent her on her way to Novigrad. Uh, I got to the point where I was actually somewhat competent at the combat in this, and now I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Hi. Hi. Why is someone crying? Why are you crying? Hey, merchant, come here. Come here, merchant. I'm trying to talk to you. There we go. What? Uh, how about a game of Gwent? Yeah, no, I've got to play Gwent. A game of Tracy Gwent. knows what I'm about. about Tracy knows me. Uh, and of course, the Northern Realms is the only good deck, which is a shame. And... Yeah. I don't want to go first. Uh, decoy, that's fine. Biting Frost. Rhinus Horn. Siege Experts. With two Siege Engines. That was decoy, don't mind that. Change you out. Ah, another siege engine, sweet. Uh, right, my turn. In which case, we will play... Siege engine, blister. No, nothing grand for life, really? Yeah, 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 you've got blister. Well, I've got a trebuchet. Okay, fine. Play your spies. And then... Boop. I'm already at 27, mate. Really? You're passing? Uh, if you're passing, dude... I could totally decoy that. Uh, I'm gonna decoy my stuff back. Yeah, there we go. I'm completely lost now. So, right. Uh, if you look on the left, 
you will see you've got a number at the top next to my... Actually, I've got, I've got my mouse out. I've got a number here and a number here. These are your, like, battle values or whatever, right? The person with the most battle value wins. How accurate is armor and weapons in Witcher 3? Uh, like, better than most fantasy games, I guess? Yeah, I would say it's, like, somewhere between Kim Come Deliverance and most fantasy games. We can go through my equipment and we can talk about it if you want at some point. Yeah, so uh, this is a battle value and this is a battle value. Then it's the first person to like win two. So you can see that I've won one, so he's lost a crystal. When he loses both his crystals, I win the game. Yeah, so you need to win two rounds, like Tracy says. Um, the first person to pass then passes for every turn. So as soon as you stop playing cards, you have to stick with the number you have. And the other person can keep playing cards or they can give up. So you could just have said, like, in the first round, I'm going to play a couple of cards, then I'm going to stop playing, and then they play all their cards trying to defeat my stuff, or they could give in and let me take a win. What I did was I played a load of cards, they passed, and I was like, actually, I've got, like, 27 battle value, you've got six, so I'm going to play my decoy, which allows me to take a card I put down back. So I played my decoys, got my cards back, and was like, okay, I beat you 6-11. I've got two powerful cards, the six and the six here, back in my hand. Um... And what I will do this time around is play the same cards again. I don't need to win one more round. Yeah, so she just played one that allows her to get something from her, like, discard pile. So I'm just going to go all in. If, if, she, if he has a card which affects my siege engines, I'm screwed. Like, isn't it... Oh. Maybe I'm not screwed. Okay, I'm going to play Biting Cold, just because I can. And I'll play... Because if I pass, I have to pass and just let them take the win here. So they're 27, I'm 26. And then I will double strength of all units in my back row. And I will play that. So I've reduced all units in the ranged row to one. You've got your siege row, your ranged row, your close combat row. They've just used a card which removes all weather effects. Actually, was that a card or a ability? I mean an ability. Ooh, it's getting close. 44, 45. I win! One point. One point. That was close. What? When is a great card game? Uh, both me and Tracy agree. It's very, very rare to find anyone else who, who thinks the same that Gwent is awesome and that we don't like Hearthstone. Because I know it's a controversial opinion, but I don't like Hearthstone. I really don't. Oh, Tower Mate Win 2. Good point. Uh, how about a game of Gwent? That's all. A game of Gwent. How about it? Oh yeah, I prefer Magda Gathering to Gwent. Oh, I forgot I had uh, Yennefer. Okay, uh, we will start again. I hate going first. Oh, oh! Nice! So, uh, Blue Stripes Commando has Type Bond, which plays next to a card with the same name to double the strength of both cards. And I have three of them. I have a really decent hand here. Not the best. I actually want some horns and some decoys, ideally. So I'm going to swap out my Sea Jet Spurts. Eh. Well, I 
I, I like it. I dig it. I'll go with it. Um... There we go. So two of those, they double each other to make eight and eight. And then they double each other again. 12, 12, 12, 36. And they passed. So, not a bad thing for them, because they've spent two cards to my three, and I spent some good cards, but I do get a instant win at the beginning. I haven't actually played the version of Met Gwent they made into like a full-on separate game. Uh, so we will start with... Yeah, we'll play him. So the enemy get him, but I get to draw two cards. Which were a bit naff. Okay. Yeah, basically they were like, look, I have to put so much in to win this round, I might as well forfeit it to you. And then I can maybe win the next two rounds. But they're betting they can win the next two. So I'm going to play you. And right now I'm just covering every single row in case they try and weather me out. Oh, hell, we could weather up. And now, yeah, there is clear weather to get rid of that. Which I don't mind, because I actually got quite a few frontline fighters, but I was betting they'd use clear weather. Yeah, like, the simplified artwork's nice. Like, it feels nice. Plus, the AI's dumb, and I like it. I'm going to lose to the AI now. Watch. Spies are so silly, and I'm playing Novingrad. Okay, I can see that. Spies are pretty cool. Maybe, like, a little bit too good, sometimes? Uh, yeah, we'll play you. And now they're playing their Biting Frost. Hey, okay. Don't I have the ability to remove that? Clear any weather effect. Yeah. Done. Buzzer P, they nerfed them in Stanline. Ah. There we go, then. They've only got one card left. They're still, like, seven points behind. It was a one. I'm six points ahead. Twelve points ahead. Seventeen points ahead. And I get to pick a card to come back. There we go. 26 points ahead. What? Play one more, and then we'll find someone else. Oh, I got seven other straps. A game of Gwent. How about it? And... Yes! Finally, my opponent will go first. Impenetrable Fog. Eh... Horn, nice. I love, I love me some horny. Uh, I'm gonna keep the spy. Gonna go to you. One by yourself is no good to me. Um. I probably should get rid of uh, some of my siege engineers because generally they're not worth it. They're like plus one to everything in your back row, but unless you have like a lot in your back row, that's still only gonna be like three or four. There are better cards. Three, three in a row. Thank you much. Uh, we'll get rid of the impenetrable fog. Ah, we've got another horn. Sweet. Ah, uh, love me some horn. Right. Oh, you've got her. I've got her as well. I'm just gonna say straight up. Have yourself that. Get me two cards. Ah, oh, you did the same. See, if they played a card on their side, I was gonna give them that first round. And just be like, hey, you want the first round? Sure. Uh, 
You know what I'll do? I could decoy that. <laughs> yeah, I'll decoy and have your card. Thank you. I'm just doing this for, like, shiggles right now. Use it. Draw another card! My opponent passed. Really? How dumb are you? Why would you do that? Okay, I play an 8. 10, 12, I win. And I got another decoy. <laughs> this is great. Uh, I was wondering a bit in Lelu with Seven Deadly Sins and you mentioned that the animals that represent them. I was wondering if the Seven Heavenly Virtues are so similar. I don't know if they do. I don't know if they do. Are you shouting at dumb AI because the one in Phantom hurt you? Yes. Yes, I am. It makes me feel better. I'm just going to ruffle stump them now. Unless they have anything like super powerful, uh, there's no way they can come back from this. Yeah, I'm going to smash them the hurty bits. And I have three Siege Engineers, which apply to each other, and they add plus one. So, I'm going to be quite effective. I have 27 on the back row from five cards. That's an average of uh, 5.4 per card. And then I'm going to double it. Because screw you, that's why. They can still ruin my back row with a weather effect, which is why I like playing as this leader. I can't remember his name. What's his name? Apparently I can't select him. However. Foltus, yeah. Uh, I like playing as him because if someone does screw my back row, I can just be like, hey, my back row is fine. Screw you. Um, we'll double our mid range as well. Pink Jin? Ooh, Pink Jin. If you say Pink Jin, Tracy will be all over that. Because of the pink part, not necessarily the Jin part. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. This is what happens when you like allow me to draw extra cards on the first go and then GG to me so early on in the first round. Half the reason I like it so much. Korea, you and Tracy will get on like a house on fire then. Uh, we will double that row as well. 82. This is, this might be the highest score I've ever got in Gwent. They've got one card left. What will it be? Oh, using penetrable fog. Oh no. Whatever will I do? Okay. I decoyed my own card. And you passed? Why? You've got a card left in your hand. So I play my last card. I play Fold Test Ability to just remove that, because why not? There we go. 87. Okay. Uh, in terms of the armor and stuff, that's all relatively accurate. Apart from uh, back scabbards. Back scabbards are terrible. Back scabbards never really used. They're mostly used for storage of swords. Like, you would carry your sword around on your back. You wouldn't carry it to draw it from your back, but you'd carry it around. Like, you would carry, like, a claymore around on your back, because where else the hell would you carry it? Like, on the side of your horse. 
if you didn't have a horse, on your back. Um, but you wouldn't be able to draw a sword from there, because, like, if you've got it in the sheath, and the sheath goes down beyond your hip, your arm cannot extend high enough to pull a sword out. And even then, extending that high enough, the sword's going to be there, like, pulling it past your, like, your neck, your ear. That's never going to happen. Uh, I should turn the volume down a bit. It's a bit loud. It's like the back crow of Aris. Actually, no. I know there's that video of that guy being like, actually, this is the way that all the people actually did in the past. Uh, apparently, strictly very, very wrong. Uh, from what I understand from actual historians and archers. Um, a lot of them did store it on their back because on the side it gets caught on things and stuff. Whereas on your back, it's less likely to get caught. You're more likely to be firing as part of a uh, a formation and stuff, so you won't be, like, jumping around or whatever. Like, you will mostly be firing arrows as part of a large group. So. Um... Rogues can use backstabbers because if they use swords, the swords are small. In which case, you're talking about D&D, &D, which is fantasy, and I'm talking about real life anyway. So we're talking about, like, different things here. I'm talking about, like, realistic usage of military weaponry in medieval period. Hunting side warfare back. Yeah, I, I don't know about how hunting was done, but I imagine that hunting would be a lot more useful to have a side draw on arrows. The one thing that really annoys me in films is when someone draws a bow to full extension and then holds it there. It's like, that's not how you do it. Like, you would draw it part way, aim, then fire, if anything. You wouldn't ever full draw and hold, because then you're just going to start losing control. I was never a very good archer anyway. Much, much better with a sword than I was with a bow. Which is the opposite of how I play games. Um, do -do -do -do. Oh, prettiness. Can I have the prettiness? I can. Horse archers would use, yeah, horse archers would use side quivers or they would use quivers on their horse saddle. Yeah, you, you never want a, a string drawn at full tension very long anyway, because it'll damage the string. Okay, I have no idea how, oh, whoops. So I just used um, one of my potions. That potion took me a lot of effort to make. How do I draw my sword? Ah. Whoops. Oh, spears are really, really good. It's just nobody uses them as much these days when they're talking about historical stuff, which is a shame because spears are a lot more common as well. I can just fight with my fist. It's fine. It's annoying. We don't have a Tracy here to tell me what I'm... What I'm doing. We need a Tracy. I'm lost without her. How do I draw my sword? It's a bleak and dark expanse between card games. Oh yeah, spears cheap, easy to teach people to use in a formation. Relatively easy to teach people to use because people aren't scared and don't have to worry about distance as much. Like, obviously you have to worry if a guy gets inside your spear reach, but you don't have to worry about the distance moving forwards and back and so on because you just generally, like, you have a longer weapon than them. Just stay at range. Like, you can teach the very basics of spear probably easier than you can teach sword basics. Hey, Roach. Where are you? Of course he came from that direction. Hi. I mean, scary cavalry is still like a real problem. Ooh, hello. Not so fast, Roach. Scary cavalry will always be a problem. Because cavalry charging you is bloody scary. 
like, yeah, you know, pole weapons are good against horses. But it takes a lot of training to get people to hold in the face of a cavalry charge. A lot of training. Like, that is why they are used by police. Not because they're ever going to use their horses against you. Left and right deep path of swords. Alright, and that is my... Is that my silver? No. That's my silver one. Yes. Sweet. Thank That's you. It, Roach. Yeah, the monster one can, like, pull double duty and kill everything, but it degrades really quick. Because silver. Ah, you didn't play with the uh, controller. See, I know it's heresy to play with the controller, but when it comes to, like, movement and stuff, I prefer the analog rather than the left. Wait, that's right. Left. Left. Like, I like to be able to go left, left, left. Like, you have that nice variety of range with an analog input. I just like suffering, apparently. I can attest to that. press the keys with less force. That's not how the keys work. Uh, is it true that advanced spear so is more difficult than advanced push. sword? Nah, no, I, I would say advanced anything is going to be as hard as advanced anything. It also depends what you're fighting, etc. Like, obviously there are very different ways of doing it. Um, I would probably say that like advanced spear is really, really hard against anyone with a shield. Because if you're fighting at someone with a shield and you've got a pointy weapon that only works at range, at range they're just going to have their shield up and you're never going to really get that spear into them. You've got to constantly just dodge and wait for them to make a massive fuck up. I don't mean like a massive fuck up. Like they need to make a big fuck up. Not a small one. Whereas with a sword, you can choose to get in closer. You can dodge around. Any movement you make in close is a much bigger angle around them. So it gives you more accessibility. If they attack you and fail, you can respond with a sword. Whereas if you're in, in close with a spear, you can't. Like, there are varieties of different ways. Like, I, I don't think when you get to advanced level, it's apples and oranges, right? You can't really compare them very easily. I haven't tried spear, so I can't personally say, but... In fantasy world building, my suggestion is always... Whoa. Make sure that all weapons are relatively similar, equal... Don't make, like, one thing super powerful or anything in terms of, like, axe, sword, whatever, spear. And then swords are just marks of nobility and status. Because, honestly, in a medieval world, swords break a lot. Because you're relying on, like, medieval metallurgy techniques. Whereas an axe is a giant haft of wood and then a bit of metal. So it's mostly relying on, like, wood Move being it. resilient. Which is fine. Uh, spear, same again. And they're cheaper to replace. And you can replace just the metal bit. Whereas with a sword, once a sword is damaged, it, you're going to need to replace the entire blade. And that's going to be complicated. And very expensive. Um. Bent or snapped. It depends on the metal. Uh, modern days, they would bend more than snapping. Old times, they generally would risk snapping more, depending on the age. Um, as far as I'm aware, they would bend more likely if the lower carbon contents. But higher carbon content allowed you to get a sharper edge. I don't know where I'm going right now. I'm just like, I'm just going to ponder around. I'm just enjoying, like, having a chat and enjoying the world. I'm also afraid that if I get into combat, I will just die. If I'm uh, correct, Europe had really advanced forging techniques for their time. Europe were pretty decent at their forging. They also had some really decent steel. And by really decent, I mean okay. Like, Europe had some okay steel. Ooh, hello. 
Yeah, like the atmosphere is really nice. The music is really good as well. I really do love the Witcher music. I still need to try and contact um, CD uh, Project Red to see if I can borrow the music for uh, roll for it. My contact stopped working there, so. Ah. Um. Part of the reason about Toledo Steel being like, oh my god, Toledo Steel is amazing, everyone should have a sword, is because they had some really good steel around there. Like, straight up, the iron was a really good quality. Um, part of the issue with Japan is they had really shit iron. And that's why they have kind of unique, unique swords, is because they had really crappy iron. So what the Japanese did is they made their swords out of two types of iron. They made one out of a high uh, carbon snappy breaky steel which they use the edge and then the back is a bendy but tougher steel which is why they aren't double-edged swords because they have two types of uh, battle in them cheap cheap katanas that weren't you know dual forged uh yeah they they would snap because they just didn't have any good at iron oh okay right i'm gonna die but let's try it anyway. Wolves will tear it to pieces. Gotta help. Oh, friendly dog. Hi, friendly dog. Hey, you. Oh yeah, no, they are dogs tame. They're just pet. shit. Wonder what it's doing. They're, they're best of bad situation. They're also useful for certain situations. Mm, got a key, like, so dear color. Ooh. Did we just wander into a quest? Sweet. I think it wants me to follow. Okay. Um, as much as I hate the fact that modern society goes, yeah, the only decent sword is katana. Everything else is terrible. Katanas are good for a few things. Firstly, um. If you want, like, a butchering blade for a close-in combat inside, like, a, a, a house or something where you've not got a lot of range, katanas are good. What a katana is, and katana purists will help me for saying it, is a katana is a short, double-handed saber. That's what it is. It's a single-edged cutting blade that's used for chopping, and it is short for a two-handed blade. Definitely short. Like... A single-handed blade would roughly be about that length. In terms of medieval Europe. Um, secondly, there is no, you know, edge on the other side. Ooh, hello. Hi. Whoa, okay. Oh, I totally did not stand with the sword there. Something bad happened inside. Best coin and see. I will take your sword. I have no idea what it was like. That is an awkward way to die. Your pelvis looks very damaged. Uh, yeah, the doggo was really helpful there. I did not know what I was doing, but the doggo helped. Um, so you don't have the second edge on the sword, which means that you have to attack from certain ways. But that helps for people who are not very experienced or good with swords. If you give someone a sword and they're untrained in a sword, I would probably give them a katana. Just because people don't have to worry about a second edge. Um... It's relatively forgiving, and if you hit something, the edge alignment is relatively easy. Because if you have a thin sword, I wouldn't give them a rapier. People get confused about distance of a rapier. That's a problem, right? It takes a little while to realize how to use a rapier. Um, the edge, right? So blade edge alignment is like uh, if if I have like a blade that thin, right? When you hit something and you start cutting through it, if you move the blade left or right, I'm increasing the amount of surface area. 
So there's a lot more that you need to push through. And that's going to cause the blade to like not cut. It's going to get stuck. It's going to stop. You're not going to be able to follow through with your swing. Um, and a lot of European swords, because we had much better steel and our forging techniques were quite good, tend to be thin. Because we were like, right, we can make long blades and make them thin, so they weigh the same as a thick katana that's really short. And length in a blade is really helpful. I Generally, in a fight, you want a longer blade, because that means, yeah, I can hit you, you can't hit me. That's great. That's the situation you always want, right? Any any situation. I can hit you, you can't hit me. Great. Uh, but katana, because the katana's blade is actually really thick at the back, because of the way they build it, it's like that. And because of that, when the thrust digs in, the back, as the, like an arrow, kind of follows it in, and it's hard to twist it sideways, because you've already kind of wedged it open, because it's a wedge, not like just a, you know, not a, like a cutting blade, it's a wedge. So it pushes itself in. So a katana helps you keep edge alignment. So if you hit something with a katana, you're not going to be able to twist it as easily, so you're naturally going to follow through the way you should. So um, it helps people who are, like, not used to or experienced to swords actually use them. Winds howling. Looks uninhabited. Oh yeah, that is messy. Okay, what am I meant to be doing? Looting? Okay, sure. Oh, silver. You think the bandits would have done that? What am I meant to be doing in here? Standing on top of a corpse? I can do that. Yeah, I'm standing on top of the corpse. Use sense. Ooh, hello. Something under the floorboards. Maybe they're loose. Or I could just wedge one up. Also, it's much more natural for someone to want to use uh, a two-handed sword. Because doing this and trying to keep your body away and using something at arm's length is much more tiring than using a sword two-handed close in. So that is that is a lot more tiring, that is a lot less... Uh, it doesn't feel right. Whereas holding a sword closer in is a lot less tiring. So I... I as much as I hate to say, I would give someone a katana if they didn't know how to use a sword. Diary of a Fire Swallower. Well, swallowing is good for you. Not fire. Admittedly. Hermit notes. Ooh. I was at Loch Muin. That's right, the summit of summits itself. We got there, and my troop mates and I, knowing that the meeting of the mighty in the ruins, you see, whenever big shots gathered, chew some particularly grisly fat. Uh, the problem is in which I don't know if they're actually chewing really grisly fat or, you know, just, you know, passing the time. Um, there's a coin to be had for performing men like us. Diet, George needs to relax with some laughing and indulging other sorts of simple delights. I learned this a lot from my old man who dragged me around to juggle outside courts and conventions all over the continent. That voice is like a really throat voice, so it's really doing my, my throat in doing that. I wonder if I can lower it. And so now, plying my trade as a fire swallower, I told the lads up soon as I caught the word of what was brewing in Loch Muin. And we turned our wagons away at once. I'm not much politics, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Tomorrow's just lost a king, a future was a design the matter. John representing a side matter, Ravenold was there, blah 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 blah. Right, carrion. The rest was dull, I'll talk about the uprising. Uh, its leader, who they called the Virgin, the Nef Guardians had a delegate, some Shillard fellow talking about restoring the Conclave and Supreme Council of Sorcerers. They were talking about Supreme Council. Okay. I didn't listen to much of that. My eyes were glued to the unusually large number of armed troops present at their peaceful talk. Steel plated grunts clenching pointy weapons and pace the ruins courtyard. We didn't ra wait around to see if them things were developed. We loaded our stuff into the wagon and left. Uh... Hermit notes. Okay. A dog's life. Dog's gone. Hmm. Didn't King Come Deliverance do weapons accurately? Less accurate than their armor. Um, mainly because they. It's hard to. It's. It, I will say, yeah, it's hard. It's straight up difficult to actually model 
how to keep distance so we can switch between targets. And in Kingdom Come Relivance, one of the big issues of their combat system is you can't switch between targets very easily. You can do it, and it feels like you suddenly switch the Earth around you. And you lose a bit of sense of, like, where things are relative to everything else. It's a hard not life for us. No, I don't want your broken rake, mate. Or your rotting flesh. Or your water. Bye, Finanza! Great thing about a rapier, right, is it's 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 a it's a spear that you can carry around in everyday life. A rapier is not a battlefield weapon because it's an everyday life spear. That's what it is. That's entirely what it is. It's an everyday life sphere, a spear. That's why it's not a battlefield weapon. Because on a battlefield, just use a spear. Not all the time, but nine ten times out of ten. Don't get me wrong, massive fan of rapiers. They're not battlefield weapons. Unless you're on a boat or something. Well, even then, even then, you'd probably use something with a bit more of an edge anyway. Okay. Is this the same one? We it was the same one, okay. Humanoid mechs would be a problem in, like, real warfare. Like, okay, why would you want a mech like that in the first place? Like, humans have far too many points of articulation to be necessary for something like that. Like, yeah, mechs are cool and all because it allows you to personify people as the actual machines. And give them personalities and stuff. You anthropomorphize your military vehicles, but, like... There's no real necessity to that. Yeah, you can knock things down. Things have much higher profile. If they have a high profile, they're easy to hit. Like, you want to be as low to the ground as possible to be stealthy. To be a lower target for people to shoot at. More stable, you can go over more like interesting terrain. You can hide more easily. Hey, Roach. Thanks for hanging out here for me. Wee! Do 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 do. Yeah, the armor that uh, Geralt's currently got on is pretty accurate as well. And it's a pretty reasonably priced and pretty decent defense for the day. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell is that? What now, you piece of filth? <laughs> oh, I had drawn the right sword. Okay. Okay. 
And back up. I forget that these guys hit like a truck. Stop hitting like a truck! Just destroy it. Ah! Oh dear, uh, I'm not in a place to fight this ghoul. use you? Hmm, I can't remember how to use my signs. Right two. Ah! Right, come at me. Oh, okay, back up, back up, back up. Woo! So that was close. Thank you. Area liberated. Oh, yeah. Because I'm awesome. Everybody's cool when you're Great part games. of the team. Everything is awesome. Do you play Gwen? I wouldn't mind a look at your stock. I wouldn't mind a look at your stock. Which is terrible. Actually. Pure silver. What's my current blade I'm using? That's my silver sword. Farewell. Almost 90 damage. Uh, almost 100 damage. With 28 arm piercing. My silver sword's pretty damn cool. Uh, it does need to be repaired. That would be nice. I need to be level 14 for that, though. No, darling. I think the 30 piercing still makes that worthwhile.
You play Quents? Hungry like a wolf, I am. Hungry like a wolf. I should also probably sleep. Like, I should heal at least something. No one around here play Gwent? I am disappointed. If I ever have a son, I'll name him Garrett. Oh. It used to be wagons showed on market days, loaded with all kinds of fat, smoked bacon, lard, big sausage, now it's acorn flour and tufts of burdock, and all you can trade is what little hoops left. Yeah, this is pretty tough. Uh, uh Flick went. Want a chat? No with me. My head's a twirling with hunger. Uh, want a chat? No with me. My head's a twirling with hunger. Okay, I guess she doesn't want to play Gwent. Don't know why. Girl's real job is a Gwent shark, not monster. I mean, if they pay more than 10 every time, hell yeah. It's a bit limiting. Are you just out there in your undies, mate? What is going on here? Boy, you there. Hi. Oh, look, we got ourselves a customer. Not about to buy anything from you. Oh, afraid you're mistaken. If we're to let you pass, you gotta pay. And if I don't? <laughs> then you die. See this medallion? Uh, Gaffer! Gaffer! Shut it, Solbeck. Aye. Now I see it. We didn't mean no... Recognize the guild? Aye, Master. <laughs> Forgive us for not remarking on it earlier. Please. Gaffer! Gaffer! Now listen. Might pass through again someday. Don't know when. But when I do, I don't want to run into you. That clear? As a summer's day, my lord. God speed you on your path. Gaffer, Gaffer. Was it now, Solbeck? Gaffer, he's a witcher. <laughs> Solbeck. What? Shut it. So, yeah, you're still bandit slow, so hi. Well, I can't, why well, I can't do that. But, but they're bad guys. What? Let me shoot the bad guys! Mm. Bad guys. Whee! Hello? Is there anyone there that they may fight? No? Okay. Oh dear. Hi dear. I love the sound of like they're just like... That, that ambient like sound of wind. That's beautiful. Band oh, bandit camp. Oh, hi. Damn. He can't take this. Ah! Damn it. Okay, that didn't work. Oh well. It was a fun it was a fun one that's it, don't worry. We we did well ish. Especially since I have no idea of the controls. I think we did okay. Thank you for the help there, chat. Yeah, no, the archers are the worst. The archers are literally the worst. I think we're going to give it another go. Just because, screw you. Also, we don't have full health. Should we, like, wait for, like, an hour? 
meditate. Oh, how long do I need to, like, how do I heal? Okay, so how do I heal? Oh, yeah, high difficulty, you don't heal, meditate. Okay, how do I heal then? Swallow. Only swallow? Wow, people, everyone's trying to swallow at me. Feels like high school. There we go, important phone messages sent. Oh, I guess I can just grab some food from my inventory, right? Just stuff my face with, uh... Raw meat? Candy? Dumplings? All the food is pretty much the same. Oh, I've got slots for my consumables. How do I get to those slots then? That's cheating. Tracy. How dare you suggest that? Up and down. Korea. Just wasted my thunderbolt. How do I get to those slots? Like, there is a way to get them, right? Quick access menu, guess I use. Hmm. Which are three quick access food? Here are some results from a search. If you tap the left bumper for the menu, it pauses. It pauses. If I hold it, it time slows. For control, I found it changes which stick you navigate the radial wheel with. Uh -huh. Ah, right, you hold. Okay. I think we will also meditate for like one hour. That was Google. Right, let's do this. Come here. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on your face. So I'm gonna shame all over your face. Do, do, a female deer.
die. One more. He can't break this. That'll never work. Ow. Oh! Wait, did they just kill their own leader by mistake? Is there any way to parry? Not good. L2. Ah. Yeah, it was a very messy decapitation. It went everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Obviously should have swallowed. Ah, yeah, it can be useful. Yeah, I played this before, like, three years ago. And I play video games, like, as my job. So I've played a lot of games in between. Like, a lot of games. So, yeah. Right, got that back. Did I figure out the controls yet? Eh. Sort of. Also, screw the archers. Get one archer down. That's not an entrance. Kill! Kill him! That is. Is it? Bad idea. Eh, it counts. Form a row. I thought I had my sign ready. I did not have my sign ready. Okay. Oh, there we go. There was the parry. Oh! Hi. Really? Ready? There we go. I was getting better at the parries. Can 
And a lot of crappy swords. I'll have a bloody barmy reward for you. You watch. Right okay. Insane. Uh, sure. Hi. Well, I, I've no gold. I, I've no, in fact. But you ever come to Claywich? I'll have a bloody barmy reward for you. You watch. Right okay. Insane. Sure. Uh... No, no, anything tough would be a very interesting fight right now, considering that I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, hi. Yeah, you need this one. Uh, just keep running. Right. And back we go. How long are you gonna make me wait? Ow! 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 Bloody hell, you dodged that pretty nicely! Ow! Okay, thank you. Badass. I feel good at the end now. Face tanking is a legitimate strategy. Don't diss the face. Yeah, no, I tried parrying to begin with. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't parry these people. Ah, bang! Yeah, okay, can't parry these people. Um, but, you know, parrying unarmed opponents is definitely a legitimate strategy. In fact, it's probably a more legitimate strategy. It's very effective. Hi, you want to unarmed punch me? Sure. Here's a steel blade in your way. Enjoy. Yeah, but Quentin gets the first hit, but it doesn't do any damage. It just means I survive the hit and then I have to hit him again. Uh, probably better against those guys, but I was still like, ooh, Igni. Gotta practice the tumbling. Whee! And the j jumping, you know. By the way, the Witch RPG is out. I've been nerding out about it with Tracy. Uh, do you play Gwent? Please tell me you play Gwent. Oh, no, you don't. That didn't look scary Very at all. Well. I wouldn't know if I'd play like a Sorcerer or a Witcher, but they're so tempting. Complicated for RPG. Uh, it's definitely one of the crunchy ones, but interesting nonetheless. Very much based on the kind of the 3.5 idea of skill for everything. Play a bard. I mean, it's maybe one of the settings where I'm not actually keen to play a bard. Like, don't get me wrong. Would like to play a guard. Oh, hello. It's a goose. Just in case I need an explanation. I killed the goose! Oh! Hi! I don't know how I did that, but I walked through the... Hmm. Um, apparently I 
can just walk through walls. I am a ghost. Ghost alt. Gear yeah, roast. Gear yeah, roast. Gear yeah, roast. Gear yeah, roast. Yeah, I killed a goose, not a chicken. Nobody likes gooses. Geese. Geese. All the sorcerers are super hot. Because isn't it implied that they use their magic to make themselves super hot? Like, isn't it, like, basically implied that they basically do plastic surgery with magic? Receiving incoming transmission. Yennefer was a hunchback. There we go. Nazca, 100 bits. Beware of Gwent. It can steal your soul. It's already stolen my soul. Don't worry. And it can have it with pleasure. Thank you very much, Nazca. 100 bits. Magical Botox is like my dream. Fun story. Botox Titans, uh, except for your vocal cords, which it actually makes relax. I actually no idea why that is. I'd like to know the chemical reason for that. Good story. If I had magic power, if I had one magic power, I would transport, uh, like, Myself, maybe like just a just a couple of thousand miles. Go to California. That seems pretty fun. Look at that sky. That looks badass. Hey you. Uh, looking looking sexy today. California would be a nice stop. I hear it's lovely. There are apparently some nice people over there. I've heard Fremont is okay, Newark and so on. I would have the teleporting power for the movie Jumper. No, if I had a superpower, I would totally go up teleportation. It'd be great. It's also burning. Okay, maybe I would transport someone to the UK a couple of thousand miles. That that might be work. That might be work. I'm good at words. That might also work. That might be good. That said, I actually had a nice walk today. Like, I walked, and it was nice. It was weird. Yeah, strange feeling. Ah, uh, right. I should probably knock off. We've been streaming for almost four hours, which included two very salty hours. Still have a salt shaker next to me on my desk, which is probably not the place that you normally keep a salt shaker. Hi there, default house layout, eh? Actually, I should need that water. It was it was a pleasant walk. I was listening to two cellos. I was thinking about awesome people. And it was not too hot, not too cold. Nice, you know, bit sunny, not too sunny. It was very pleasant. I was happy content. Genuinely happy content. Might be partly because of the awesome people, but, you know, everything else is cool as well. A hedgehog salt shaker. That sounds awesome. I approve, Nanon. And we're back here again. Okay, I am going in circles. Wait, is someone sacrificing to that, or is it just, like, a pile of salt? It could be snow. 
I'm going to say it's salt. Someone's salty, they died. Rip. Uh, right, I think I'm going to call it here tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I've been at Elysium. Well, anyway, find someone to raid. Save game. Oh, thank you, Rich Kendra. There we go. Right. No problem. I do enjoy the streams. Could, uh, could raid TI. Oh, so many people are online. Uh... You know what? Let's raid Trooper. Trooper's playing Last of Us Left Behind. I've never seen Trooper live. But Trooper, Trooper is good peeps. Trooper knows their stuff. So we're totally going to raid Trooper. Oh no, Damo, sorry. So I think it's going to be a standard love raid. You go, go in, say hello, be, be lovely, be excellent, and use enter love. Uh, just a standard love raid. As you do. Thank you very much for coming out. I will be streaming again. Oh, I might not be streaming Saturday. I've got to find out. I might not actually be this Saturday. Uh, got to check that one. But I will be in Vampire Masquerade on Saturday evening on Roll For It. So go check that out. Thank you for being amazing. Stay shiny.